if you could consolidate all your electronics down to one small handheld device, would you? Well, this company Maka here seems to think so, as they have an all-in-one that it's a replacement for all these devices. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into the Maka all-in-one. What is up, Tooligans? It's your boy Two Times here at Pro Tools Approved, and Maka was nice enough to send me this fancy device to replace all of this in your toolbox. Let's take a look and see if it can do it. First, it comes in a nice semi-rigid case, fabric, protect itself, a little zipper pouch with a basic manual, your USB cable for charging, a nice aluminum tripod, and a rubber coated tripod extension has a little threads on the end screw the device into underneath this extra cover is the device comes charged let's take a look a closer look here before we turn it on nice LCD touch screen or <laughs> nice touch screen navigation buttons and your select buttons in the center as a little probe here on the side your sensor in the back for stud protector button for a flashlight two USB-C connections one for data and power the second for just power these are all your scanning devices on the front one button a nice uh, Nice texture on the side here. It is, it's a good size, it's like the perfect size in hand. Push in the center, the device turns on. Um, I'll show you here as an example, it comes on with a voice activated. Scanning for alternating current. Scanning for wood beam. Yeah, I'm not one for that, so I'm gonna go into the units menu. You can choose metric, or Imperial turn the sound on and off you could select and choose with the center button or the touch screen now that we've got the power off let's go back to the main screen here we have horizontal measurement it gives you uh, XY axis you know not gonna be able to see it on the phone here for measurement you'll need that with the cross line laser put it on the tripod and get it balanced just right. It is not a self-balancing device, um, but it is a nice bright red laser. We've got a moisture meter here. To use the moisture meter, turn it over, push this little orange button on the back, it pops up the probes. Carefully put the probes back into the slot, probes out, and your moisture meter is ready to go. You can see that there it reads 8.6, 8.9 on the dry piece of one by. Here's a nice piece of one by that's been in the water. There we go, 30, 31, 32. Works pretty well. Let's pop that back out so we don't poke ourselves. Put that back in. Then that's our functionality menu in the back corner. Uh, this is scanning for metal or scanning for wood. Let's go and scan for your stud scanners. Um, one thing I only found out with the voice on is this needs to be calibrated every time you go to use it. To calibrate it, you've got to put it on a wall where there is no stud press this C button on the side. I'm assuming it's for calibration. When the voice is on, it says calibrated. A 
right there it's reading that's reading a piece of rebar I've gotten there let's bring it over toward the stud the little graph goes up and it makes a picture of a 2x4 on the screen that's pretty cool now there if you go up and down you have your regular reading and you have your deep reading uh, the regular reading I believe is about three quarters of an inch um, the deep readings an inch and three quarters I believe let's scan it on the deep scan let's put it on the wall calibrate it there we go picks up the stud no problem bring it over here it's a piece of rebar that it reads as a stud but it's, it's right on There is also a measurement for scanning metal. Scanning for metal. Calibrate that. Metal. There you go. Finds the rebar. Puts a picture of rebar on the screen. Has a little graph up top here that shows the sensitivity. Turn that beeping back off. Scanning for alternating current function menu. There's a tick tracer or AC scanner. Um, that's on the side here. Push this little nub and have a probe come out. Now I've got a hot extension cord here and you can see on the screen there's high medium and low sensitivity uh, we're on high right now you can see as it touches the cord it shows on screen or in the receptacle slots also has a flashing light here Green, red when it's hot. Pop that back in. Now into the measuring screens. There's a single measurement, constant measurement, addition, subtraction, area measurement, volumetric, single Pythagorean, double Pythagorean, and then it keeps a record of your measurement. Now this is the only issue that I've run into with this unit. Um, it is a uh, experimental unit, a prototype if you will. I'll show you here something that I've come up with that we're scanning. I don't know about you guys, but that's some of that belts and boxes math right there. Everything that scans the total comes up 18.8 feet. Now I've spoken to the manufacturer. Um, this is a prototype unit. They expected some kind of bug with it. They've ensured me that this will be addressed before units go into production on their Kickstarter, which I believe is going live sometime mid-September. Also, with the volumetric measuring, we're not at uh, 81 cubic feet there. My math isn't that good, but I know we're not there. Let's take some longer measurements across the shop. There you go. Again, I've got 81.56. Pythagorean yeah that 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 math is a little off so they assured me that that'll be addressed uh, as long as we're scanning with the scanner see the little picture of the unit there if you press up and down on the keys 
You can change your position from scanning from the back of the unit here to the middle of the unit to the front of the unit. You know, suppose you've got to get it up against a stud and you don't have, you need to measure from the back of the unit. Sometimes, you know, you've got it right up front and you want to measure from the front of the unit and that automatically does the math for you in there. That's about everything that's in this screen right here, except for the best part. On the side, there's two USB-Cs. We pop that open, and this is your thermal imager. Snaps in nicely to both USB-Cs. Choose on the menu, thermal. There's a setting menu for the thermal settings, uh, different palettes, different sensitivities. Uh, here where it says phone, it saves uh, pictures that you take with the thermal imager. Saves them in here. So the imager initializes and gives you your standard color palettes. You see that? Let's see. Put a cold soda can up here. That'll show that cold soda can. I bring my hand in. Since that's much warmer, you can see that change the palettes. If you press up and down on the buttons, it changes how opaque the color palette is. So you can actually see where that temperature is coming from. That's pretty neat. I like that. Let's move the can and I'll show you one more time with my hand. So there's your imaging. One push, you can start to see my hand. Two pushes. Three clicks, there you go. You can see my hand and like a ghostly color palette. It has temperature, 97.7. 96.6 there we go now it's just the screen with no imaging color on it still keeps the temperature up in the top left corner works pretty works really well now something like this may not replace everything that you need on a job site but around the house DIY users absolutely uh, instead of spending all the money on all these multiple devices, they've got it packaged right here in a small, uh, nice, nicely made unit. There are going to be different um, models of this. You can purchase it with the thermal imager, without the thermal imager, um, multiple other options uh, they have listed out on their website. So check them out. Maka. M-A-K-A, when they send me a brand new fixed unit that is uh, final for production, we'll make a decision then if it's going to be Pro Tools approved or not. Once again, thank you for your support. Appreciate it. Please click that like button and subscribe. Stay tuned for new videos weekly.